Okay. So first, let's go ahead and start with our opening prayer together. Um, so we'll start with the sign of the cross and pray through Deuteronomy 7, 9 together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Know then that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant mercy to the thousandth generation toward those who love him and keep his commandments. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So on our adult session on Wednesday night, we talked about uh, commandments. We talked about the two greatest commandments, and then we also talked about the first four commandments, um, going through the first three about loving God. And the last one we included, um, although it's talking about someone else, right, loving, keep, honoring your mother and father, but um, tying it in with our thoughts on the domestic church for this month that we're looking at. Um, so just as a real quick refresher and so that the kids have a chance to see it, um, I'm going to go ahead and play that Ten Commandments video that we showed the other day with the real quick um, and easy ways to learn it because I think it's especially great for kids. So guys, as you're looking at this video and they're showing you the hand motions to do, we're going to start doing them along with them. Um, because it's a real great and easy trick for us to learn those 10 commandments. So I'm going to pull that video up to share with us. Hey there, I'm here to teach you a really simple way to memorize the 10 commandments in order using your hands. Number one is thou shalt have no other gods before me. So we just make a one with our fingers and have it pointing towards heaven like it's pointing toward God. There's only one God. Kind of going along with that, the second commandment is thou shalt not bow down to any false gods or false images. Uh, you can remember this one by using two fingers. One of them is that idol we we're talking about you shouldn't worship, and the other is somebody bowing down to it. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You can remember this one by using three fingers, because it's the third commandment, and putting them over your mouth. Kind of as a reminder to watch the words that you say and use them for good. The fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You can remember this one by using four fingers and making them into a little church, because it's important to go to church on Sunday. The fifth commandment is, honor thy father and thy mother. Uh, we make this one by using five fingers and kind of forming a salute uh, to show respect and obedience to them, because they deserve it. Thou shalt not kill. You can make two guns with either hand as a reminder to just don't kill, don't do it. The seventh commandment is thou shalt not commit adultery. You can remember this one by using two fingers to represent a little bride in a group on top of a wedding cake using your five fingers. The eighth commandment is thou shalt not steal. Use four fingers to make a little wallet and the other four fingers to take something out of it that they probably shouldn't. Thou shalt not bear false witness. In other words, don't lie, be honest. You can remember this one by getting four fingers and putting them as if they're on a Bible and the other five in the air as if you're testifying in court. And then finally, number 10 is thou shalt not covet. Or in other words, don't be envious of what other people have. We do this one by using all 10 fingers, putting them around our eyes as if we're looking at something that our neighbor has that we really want. And there you have it. The Ten Commandments are important even to us in our day because the Lord has promised us a lot of blessings for living them. If you'd like to learn more about those blessings or about the Ten Commandments in general, you can go straight to the source in Exodus 20 in the Bible. There we go. So that's a real kind of easy way and gives you something real tangible to do to remember those Ten Commandments. Um, We'll put that link up on the website later this week so that if you guys want to go back to it and review it, you guys will have an opportunity to do that at another time. So as we're going through these commandments, um, we are going to ask you guys some questions and we are looking for answers from the kids, from the parents, um, hoping to get some great interaction here. So as we're asking these questions, feel free to, to answer them out loud. Um, and so we can all kind of have a conversation with one another um, about it. So looking at the greatest commandments, right? You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So what are some ways that we show someone that we love them? We tell them. We tell them. We tell them, right. Saying that to people is so important. It's great for people to hear. How else do we show them? We, we give them a hug. 
We give them a hug. That's a great idea. Write them letters. We write them letters. That's so great. Um, our family, since we just moved here from California a little bit ago, and we have so much family in California, there has been a ton of letter writing in the Ponsini house back and forth. And everybody every day wants to check the mail because they're so excited to see if somebody wrote them a letter back saying how much they love them. I thought everybody in California was me. <laughs> well, for the most part, sure. <laughs> Make some cookies. <laughs> Make some cookies. There you go. There you go. Com compliments. Compliments. Yeah, that's a great idea. Help. Help, right? Giving them some help. That's great. Caring for them when they're sick. Caring for them when they're sick. That's a good one. So when you have someone that you love and you get to spend a lot of time with them, what are some great things that come from that when you get to spend a lot of time with someone that you love? What are some things that you can learn about people when you spend a lot of time with them? Making memories making memories together, right? Always having some good stories to share. What do you feel? That could be another question. Yeah, what do you feel when you spend a lot of time with people? Happy. You feel happy, good. Excited. And excited, yeah. You play games with them. Mm -hmm. You play games with them. That's a great one. So when we want to spend time and we want to get to know God, how is that different from when we want to get to know and spend time like with our family here? How do we get to know God and spend time with him? What are some good ways to do that? Going to church. By going, oh. <laughs> going to church. That's good. We had double answers. Pray. 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 Uh, Saying our prayers. By praying. Yeah, yeah, getting our prayers said. Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Well, talk louder. And this God's story. So when you meet somebody, you know their story. Same way, if you love God, you read his Bible, you know his story. Right. Doing our faith formation activities, right? Mm -hmm. Those ones in our books. That was a good idea. Praying the rosary. Praying the rosary. This is a really good angle, man. Good. Good. So when we think about the Ten Commandments, right, and we have these kind of guidelines for us to help us get to know God better, to help us find our way to heaven, um, it's good for us to not only know those guidelines and how to help us, but it's good for us to know kind of what distractions we might have or things that we're going to have to overcome here while we're trying to get to know God. So what are some distractions that we might have that would keep us from God? All the naughty things. All the naughty things. Yeah. Like. All the naughty things. Yep. <laughs> That's a <laughs> technology. Technology. Yeah. Sometimes that gets in our way. Sometimes it helps us, but sometimes it gets it in our way. Huh? It was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bird's gonna. Yeah. The first commandment, not doing what your parents say, not doing what your parents say, right? That that disobeys that fourth commandment of honoring your father and mother. 
So laziness, the, laziness, laziness, right? Not using our time well. Satan. Satan, right. Right, the tricks of the devil. So the Ten Commandments are good guidelines for us. Those commandments are how God reveals himself to us, showing us what we need to do so that we can live our lives here to be happy forever with him in heaven. The first three commandments teach us what God wants us to know about our relationship with him. They teach us how to love God and serve God. The fourth commandment that we're going to talk about today teaches us to honor our father and our mother. And that helps us grow our domestic church at home. It helps us grow in our earthly family as well as God's family. So we are going to start our first worksheet this morning. And this one is called Upholding God's Commandments. So that's this one right here that says Upholding the Commandments. So everybody needs this worksheet. William, do we you are What did you say? You have that? Uh, no. Okay. Stephanie, I'll put William in a breakout room with you so okay. that you guys are together and you guys can work on that. So I'm gonna put everybody in individual breakout rooms and I'm gonna give you just five minutes to go through these as a family. So you can list your commandments, you can list some obstacles, but also list some ways that you as a family can uphold those commandments. So I'm gonna put you guys into breakout rooms and we are going to go from there. Yes, yes, has everybody got has everybody got the sheet? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay. I'm looking for it. Is it in our book? It's in your book too. Oh. What page is that? Do you know the page, Rebecca? It's also um, in your book. 83. 83. Thank you. Right. 83. Look at the book, 83. Sunday and Edmondson. If you, have you got? I've got it. I've okay. Got it. So you're going to put William and I together with Sydney? I'm gonna, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Rebecca. No, So the first one is, I am the Lord your God. I don't see that page. It's it's actually not in your books, um, because it's it's in the leader's book. Um, okay. But if anybody's missing it, um, I'm gonna try and attach That's it to the chat page. in just a second. Okay. I think it's this right here. I wanna, okay, I found it. The email that was sent to us for the Zoom link. The, the email yeah, the email, that, that was sent out. I got the email it. Email Zoom link has it as well. We found it. Okay, good. Okay, great. As we're um, looking through this worksheet, we're gonna talk about the, the first four um, and we are going to We'll kind of do a little bit of like a popcorn style going through to the families um, and asking you to share what your thoughts were on the obstacles and ways to uphold each of the commandments. Um, so when we go through the first commandment, if you guys have some stuff that you'd like to share and, and we'll kind of give like if you're ready to share, give the thumbs up and then I'll kind of call on you guys uh, and we'll go through each of the commandments. So the first commandment. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. So who would like to tell us what some obstacles are and how we can uphold that? What was it? So the first commandment, obstacles and ways to uphold that. Who would like to share with us? 
Eric and I talked about other religions that don't believe in God um, would be an obstacle, you know. I mean, I don't know if we should call them religion, but other groups that don't, that would be an obstacle. And, right. uh, and to uphold, uh, to continue believing in one God and follow our faith that we're in now. Right. That's a great idea to, to study our own faith and to make sure that, that we're well read and well versed and that our prayer life uh, makes us able to defend uh, and encourage in the faith. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Anybody else for the first commandment? We talked about um, physical items that might be an obstacle and um, mass prayer and continuous interaction with God would be good. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So physical items, um, also obstacles as well. Um, one thing I, I heard at one point in time is that when someone walks into your home, they should know that it's a Catholic home, right? Not only in how you act and treat people, but also in the images that they see. Um, so watching what can distract us, but also finding out what can help encourage us to, to make the Lord the focus of our, our home and our family as well. Thank you. Okay, the second commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Obstacles and ways to uphold. Commandment number two. The second, let me go back to the uh, to creating an ambience at the home. Sure. Kind of, you know, because I go to different homes. Some, some homes really look Catholic. They have image of Mary, Holy Family, Jesus and Mary Joseph, or a Sacred Heart statue. A lot of things make me feel that, yeah, there's a cross there. And so something to, you may give you a model maybe later. You know, we can give you a tour of a family and say, you know, I don't say exactly like that, but a similar idea way to make your home really look Catholic and that will help children to connect with those things so that, you know, we are also visual people, you know, so, so I just wanted to bring that idea. Go ahead. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Second commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Obstacles and ways to uphold. Okay. So when you get mad at your cousins, is what you wrote. So you have to say that. Go ahead. When you get mad at your cousins. Right. The way we talk to people, right? And making sure that our, our voice and our speech is always charitable. And sometimes it's not when we get upset with people. And how do you fix that? Talking out the problem. Talking out the problem. That's a great idea. Good. Oh, God. Maybe each family can share one. That'll be easy for you to participate, right? Just quickly, each one share one. Um, by saying cuss words and then by upholding that, watching what you say. Right, very good. That's a good one. And Erica, same thing about the cussing. Maybe find other words to use instead of God's name in vain. So. Right, trying to trying to train that habit of speech. Before you speak. Careful how you speak. Good. How do you express your frustrations in a good way? That's kind of, oh my gosh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, who people kind of hold it back or some days don't. So how do you, that's a question. How do you express your frustration? Mostly it is about frustrations, right? Mm -hmm. How do you express that in a good way without Getting out of that's kind of mm -hmm. William, you want to share what we said? Yeah. Um, we said that uh, using God's name as a replacement for swearing isn't good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. You gotta, you gotta even take it one step farther to overcome that habit. Okay, moving on to the third commandment, remembering to keep holy the Lord's day. So, right, keeping holy the Sabbath, making Sunday our day for God. Some obstacles or ways we can uphold it. 
Smith family, go ahead. Uh, we just said uh, choosing other items, not making uh, other items a priority, not sleeping in or choosing to do other things, just making yeah. it that this is what we do on Sunday. Right, making it a day set apart that your day on Sunday looks different than the rest of the week. Nice job. Lewis family, what about you guys? Obstacles or or activities, plans during mass time, church is boring, you're tired. How we can uphold the commandment to go to mass each Sunday, put mass first. Yeah, good idea. Especially those other activities that sometimes pop up and, and get scheduled at mass times. That's something that we have to, to really be proactive about guarding against. Guarding against. What are some ways that we can uphold that third commandment? What are some things we can do even outside of mass? Okay, go ahead. Oh, by going to church. Going on, to church? On holidays. On, on, on holidays and Sunday. We need to be in on this. Good. Those are good ideas. Church, even outside of Sunday, looking at those feast days, right? And those holidays and making them for Jesus as well. Outside of church, what are some ways that your home can look different on Sundays from every other day of the week? Having a crucifix up. Having a crucifix up. That's good. In our house, I always make dessert on Sundays. And we don't usually do a lot of dessert during the week. So my kids are excited when we get to Sundays because they know that dessert's coming. So that's just one day that one way that we make it special and have a little extra feast for the day. Um, Sunday is supposed to be a day of rest. When I was growing up, we lived on a farm and we had to do a lot of chores and work, but on Sundays we did tend to rest and have it as a family day. That's a great idea. Using Sundays for family and, and not so much for chores, um, which takes a lot of, of planning, right? That virtue of foresight uh, so that you have things kind of set up outside of Sunday so that you can um, do things together. What are some things you guys like to do as a family on Sundays? What do you like to do on Sunday? Um, play games. Play games. That's fun. Our family loves to play board games, so we do lots of games on Sundays. We go for hikes. You go for hikes. That's great. What was the other yes. one? Spend time with my baby sister. Spend time with your baby sister. That's good. Do you guys hike out here even when it's cold? It's kind of cold for me. <laughs> um, I like to make forts uh, and watch TV together with my mom. Ooh, making forts. What a great idea for Sundays. Uh -huh. I don't Good. Okay. We're going to go to our last commandment of the day, honoring your father and mother. So what are some obstacles and what are some ways we can uphold yes, yes. that? Yeah, please, please. Uh, yeah. Not listening to, to your parents, what they say. Not listening to what they say. That's an obstacle. Cortez family. Cleaning your room. Cleaning your room, that's a good way to uphold that. You're right, I love it when my kids clean their room. Makes me so happy to walk into a clean room. Lying? Lying, that's a good obstacle. Yeah, not being truthful. That doesn't help our family grow. Yeah, it does. Disrespectful. Disrespectful, right? Watching our, our speech with one another. Mm -hmm. the, way, the tone, the tone. Yeah. The tone we use, absolutely. Are you taking notes? We say that to my teenagers a lot at my house. It's not what you said, it's how you said it, gentlemen. <laughs> parents are reasonable. If your parents are reasonable. That's good. That's good. That works at our house too, when everybody's reasonable to each other. I'll be question, what is reasonable, you know? <laughs> It's not a good okay. conversation piece. What do you think is reasonable? <laughs> what do you think is reasonable? It's a good conversation to come down to the same page, you know. So. 
to help your family. To help your family, right? Always looking out for each other. Even doing things when you're not asked to do them first, right? Just doing them on your own. That's a good help to the family. What about uh, calling them if their parents, not immediate parents, grandparents? Suppose them are away, calling them or sending a Texting. note, you know, it's always that will be honoring them. And that is a nice thing to do. Can you hear us? I called okay. my mom in India, so she's so happy. I'm happy too, you know. So probably once in two weeks or once a month or so. That's it's always like very that. uplifting, upholding. Outside. That's good. That's good. Okay, we uh, get to do another activity today. I'm excited that the commandments lead us to a lot of great activities to work on as a group. Um, and so it's really nice to be able to do that. You guys are going to get longer in your breakout rooms for this one. And we're going to combine rooms um, so that we're combining families. We are going to write stories next. So give me a thumbs up if you have this sheet that we emailed to you called the commandment story. It was in that email with the Zoom link. Thumbs up if you have that. Yay, we have lots of thumbs already. We can uh, look at it on our computer. We don't okay, have that pen and out. Yeah, that's great. And I have pen and paper. Perfect. That's great. And hopefully when we put you into breakout rooms, at least one person in the room has got some. We have a lot of people who are showing me they have it, which is great. So I'm going to put you in breakout rooms and then we are going to assign one of the first four commandments to you. And what you guys are gonna do is you're going to write a story about that commandment. So first you're going to tell a story about someone and then you're going to tell about an obstacle or something that got in their way, something that they did not take care of to uphold that commandment. And then you're going to show how somebody else helped them so that they could overcome that and then they were able to uphold the commandment. So the example that they give us is that maybe there's a student who is in college. And that student sleeps late on Sundays and misses the morning masses, right? So he's not upholding that commandment of keeping um, the Lord's day holy. But then his roommate says to him, hey, we should be really going to mass on Sundays and I'll give you a ride to mass and finds a, maybe a later mass time or even an evening mass or helps that person wake up so they can get to mass. So with the help from somebody else, then they were able to overcome that obstacle and to go uh, to church on Sundays to help keep that commandment. So I'm going to take you guys, I'm going to divide you into breakout rooms. And then after that, I'm going to um, assign you a number commandment. Okay, so it's two parts. I'm going to put you in a breakout room and then give you a commandment number, one through four. And then you are going to write a story about that. So thumbs up if you're clear on the instructions. Great. Okay. So I am going to get breakout rooms assigned. Boom. Okay, room one. Do you guys want to go ahead and share? You guys had commandment number one. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and share your yeah. commandment story with us. Uh, we we had commandment two. two. Okay, commandment two. Okay, great. And this is okay. what we're doing. So, seriously. Anyway, so our second commandment is you shall not take the Lord God's name in vain. And right. so our story is of this little kid named Billy who listens to inappropriate videos online, specifically Stop. on YouTube usually. And they use foul language. These videos have interpreted him to actually use this language in real life, and it's it's a problem. So what we do is um, we have him go onto YouTube Kids and instead get on and watch videos on there instead, as well as Netflix, and spending more time offline in general with friends and family. Okay, great. 
So it's still using the videos and in watching TV, changing to more appropriate content, right? Content that is more geared towards kids. That's good. Helping you uphold that commandment of taking the Lord's name in vain. So that's good. So making sure that the television and the videos you're watching are more appropriate. And then even better than that, spending some time away from the videos and talking to those in your home and um, interacting with people who are there with you. Okay, great. Commandment number one. Who wants to share with us for commandment number one? Group two, we also had um, commandment number two. So Okay, okay. Yeah. We'll do another commandment number two. Ortiz family, are you guys going to share with us for that? <laughs> We're going to let um, one of the other families that was in our room because they actually, it was a true story. So we're going to let oh, them share. Can we do it? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's about um, a kid on the bus who keeps cussing and using inappropriate language until um, some other kids tell the bus driver and then the bus driver tells the principal and then they get cameras on the bus and the kids stop. Okay. And talk to kids. And talk to parents. And talk to the parents. That was good. What virtue of fortitude that was for those kids who were letting the other kids know and letting the bus driver know that that was inappropriate language on there. So not only did we help to overcome that obstacle of that commandment, but we also showed great virtue in uh, the virtue of fortitude, right? Courageous behavior. Nice job. That's a great story for that one. Okay, group three. Who's sharing for group three with us? Uh, speak louder, Dutch. Dutch. Okay. So, a kid has a soccer. Okay, this is um commandment number three. Okay. A kid has a soccer game tournament on Sunday. They know they have to go to church on Sunday. So they suggest to their mother that they need to be able to make a to which the mother replies, but we can't. The soccer tournament and starts in the morning and lasts all day. The child tells their mother that they could go on Saturday. The mother accepts the suggestion and that is what they do. The end. Nice, that was good. Good working through it as a family and good being creative with those solutions, right? Uh, we are graced to have the opportunity to attend vigil mass uh, sometimes instead of on Sundays so that if we do have conflicts, um, sometimes like tournaments or, or things that go from the morning until the evening that we would still have a way to make mass instead of just um, using maybe an excuse or saying, oh, it could have been kind of hard to figure out. Uh, so good job working as a family to find a creative solution for that. Nice story. Good job, you guys. Those are great stories. Thank you for those. Okay, um, I am going to take a minute. I have the display board behind me. And so I'm gonna see what I can do to show you guys that um, and to talk about all of our different things for the month that we have um, going on, talking about St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and these commandments as well. Um, so that was great. So I'm gonna pull the display board up and we'll we'll see how much of it we can see. And then we will also take a picture of it and put it on the website with the 10 commandments video and the recording for later this week for you guys. Okay, so display board, here we go. I'm gonna kind of open each panel and we'll kind of go through the panel. So up here, right, things to do this month, pray together as a family and your new year's resolutions. Okay, January Can 1st. Can people a little closer to the camera? I don't think it's quite visible. Okay. Okay. So pray together as a family. January 1st, just the other day, was the solemnity of Mary, the mother of God. The Greek word theotokos means God bear and is a title for Mary. So it'd be a great month to maybe research some different images of Our Lady uh, and some different titles of her um, and just go ahead and use her solemnity as an opportunity to get to know her better. This artwork is also our artwork of the month. We talked a little bit about it just with the adults on Wednesday, the Transfiguration, right? Oh no, this one isn't the Transfiguration. This one is um, the Two Trinities, right? It has the Holy Family there for us. Some discussion on that as well. So we will upload all of this so that you guys can take a chance 
to see it a little bit better um, on your own time as a family all throughout the month. Okay, flipping to this side. Here we go. Some more sacred art for you guys to look at for there. Um, and again, when we send it, you'll you'll have a chance to look at it better. Words to know for the month, and these are all listed in your book. So the, knowing about the two great commandments, knowing about the 10 commandments, knowing the Decalogue, right? Another name for those 10 commandments. Um, a great opportunity to really institute um, that practice in virtue that we learned in December and apply it to the 10 commandments that we're learning in January. So St. Elizabeth Ann Seton here, um, she was a, a great saint for the US. She founded an order um, and she also raised a family. Her feast day is January 4th. So tomorrow is her feast day. So great saint to learn about. She's written in the parent's guide and in the activity book. Um, so you can have a chance to read her biography. The first three commandments teach us about God and how to love God. The others teach us about our neighbor and how to love our neighbor. Um, and this, this um, display board is such a great tool for us, um, such a great thing for us to have. So even though we're, we're via Zoom, we wanna make sure that you guys have that. Okay, great. Um, looking ahead, a couple things that, that I want to show you guys. Um, the Ten Commandments sheet, we sent this as an attachment to the email so that you guys can print this out and post it at home. This month we learned about the first four. Next month we're going to go through the rest of them. So January and February we'll have them complete. So it's a great time for you guys to post them and have them up at the house. Give yourselves a chance to memorize them, to learn them, to put them into practice. We also gave you a January newsletter in your email. You've got this as well. Um, it talks about uh, some stuff for January, some things for you to think about, the calendar of events for January. Um, it reviews what we learned in December regarding virtue and it gives a reminder on the two greatest commandments and the first commandments that we are learning about today. Any questions on those handouts or is anybody missing anything? Okay, good. Good, good. Okay, you guys, it was great to be with you guys today and great to talk about the commandments with you, different obstacles, ways to uphold them. Uh, your commandment stories were great, talking about different real life examples. Um, remember to keep working on your journey boards. If you have questions about those or need help, please just feel free to email us. Um, as you guys are working through your activities for the month that you're choosing from your book, oh yay, the Hughes just showed us their little journey board. I saw it wave through the screen. Nice job. Oh, do you want to um, see it? Yeah, show it to us. Nice job. That's looking great. That's fantastic. Kind of carved out each month so far. So our October journey is kind of like a road. What we did throughout the month in little little pot holes road. And then November are kind of in the house with the um, walks and things like that. Or with our bakes and our, our gifts and our Great, thank you. Thank you for sharing that too. That's so great. It's good for us to, to kind of see what people are doing. I was just gonna let you guys know, send us in some pictures or as we come to these adult and family meetings, bring your, your journey boards to us, let us see them. Um, as you guys are working through your activities, feel free to email us pictures um, of that so that we can see what you're working on that and, and share in that with you um, so that we can check it out and be a part of it uh, even even virtually while we're, while we're waiting until we're in person together again. So thank you. Um, our next family meeting will be February 7th. Um, and between now and February 7th, anybody who's preparing for First Communion or for confirmation, classes for that are weekly now. So you'll have 
weekly classes for sacramental prep until we are back with family faith formation on February 7th. Any questions on kind of the calendar? Good. Father Tom, anything you want to add for us? Right. Um, so I think one question I have is today, what is the feast today? Our first communion class is face to face. First communion classes are face to face in the Cabrini room with Mrs. Brucing. So Father Tom was asking, what feast day are we celebrating today? To, to children, to children. What is the feast day we celebrate today? Epiphany. 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 Nice job. Epiphany. Wonderful. So, follow-up question is. How do you connect, uh, you know, the first commandment and the and the story of Magi, you know, Epiphany and the journey? How do you connect that? Give me some clue. So what drives them to go to go and see, follow the star, you know? Oh. Something connected with the first commandments? Do you see any connection? With their story and the first commandment or second? Mostly first commandment, you know, so that'll be easy to. Anybody? Their faith. Their faith. So, what's the first commandment? What is the first commandment? Do not believe in false gods. Yeah, that means. Basically, it is loving God, right? No false God, but then loving God. God as your number one. So what made them follow the star? What made the Magi follow the star? Because they wanted to make money or because they wanted to go to another they country? They wanted to or? find God. To find God, that's right. Clara, great. That's, uh, Clara gave the answer. That is actually to find God. For they were searching for God. And find God. That's, yeah. That's the way you find clues, you know. They were in search of God and then finally found Jesus. Isn't it great? So that's the first commandment. The, the love for God, search for God, ended up making them find Jesus in the manger. And then they were overjoyed. You know? so, okay, that's all my wrap up question and they did very well and and uh, wonderful i miss you a little stories but i'll be watching the recording to see hear your stories and you know i think good participation nice participation and rebecca good directions you're given uh, so if, uh, enjoy the week and enjoy the month because uh, you know this january new year we would like to see that you're more focused into and learn a lot from the activities and you grow as a family and a strong family and a faithful family. That's my wish and uh, and your encouragement to you, okay? Thank you, Father. We're gonna close in prayer today with Psalm 119. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed those whose way is blameless, who walk by the law of the Lord. Blessed those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, they walk in his ways. You have given them the command to observe your precepts with care. May my ways be firm in the observance of your statutes. Then I will not be ashamed to ponder all your commandments. I will praise you with a sincere heart as I study your righteous judgments. I will observe your statutes. Do not leave me all alone, amen. In the name of the amen. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Have a great month. We'll see you next month. That's Me right. Too. Happy New Year again. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.